Hello guys, sorry I'm uh, slightly late today, but uh, yeah, just, uh, well, I've actually been painting the kitchen, so uh, nothing overly exciting, but um, I just spoke to Will beforehand, who's my guest today, and I was just explaining that um, basically I got a bit carried away painting floorboards, uh, not floorboards, <laughs> skirting boards, and um, yeah, before we knew it, it was uh, time to go, so um, yeah, apologies for being slightly late, but um, yeah, hopefully it's all good, and um, wishing you all a happy Sunday today. Hope it's uh, going well for you. We've just uh, decided to take it really easy today, and um, yeah, pretty much all weekend, I guess. Just uh, taking it nice and slow, which is really cool. And um, you'll probably notice I've actually uh, decided to change location today, so just uh, thought I'd bring it downstairs instead of uh, being up in the bedroom, and um, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it feels nice to be in a different space doing this, so it's all good. And um, yeah, hello to everyone that's already tuned in. It's uh, really nice to see some uh, familiar faces coming in. And um, as I said, today my guest is Will, uh, Will Lamerton. Um, he lives in North Devon and he's, uh, yeah, his coastal stuff is absolutely amazing. So um, I've kind of named this session um, Coastal Vibes. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can have a nice chat about the coast and kind of find out a bit more about Will and uh, his story, which should be really good fun. So um, if you bear with me a few seconds, I'll just add him into the chat. Okay, should be coming in, hopefully. Hey! Hey, looks all to be working. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> no, I'm doing good, thank you, how are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. I was, uh, just saying, I was continuing the late theme of the day. I was, uh, I think, a minute or so late. <laughs> uh, Sunday, well, you've got to relax on a Sunday, surely. That's, that's what's uh, about it, yeah. Exactly. As, I, as I was saying before when we were chatting, it's, I've always, whenever you've done a Sunday session, I'm just working on the bed and it's tuning on the Sunday. Keep it lazy. <laughs> yeah, got to be done. Got to be done. <laughs> got to be done. Thank you for inviting <laughs> Oh, thank you for coming on. It's, uh, yeah, really nice. And um, I guess it's something I always say about Instagram. If, you kind of use it in the right way and kind of for me I use it in that positive inspiring way and it's yeah. such a cool way to connect with different people that I wouldn't normally connect with so yourself oh. included. Yeah it's amazing because you're up in Bristol and obviously I'm up in North Devon so it's, you, you just wouldn't collide in the past would you but it's amazing that we can connect and share kind of because it's amazing how many similarities you have with people kind of everywhere so yeah it's as i said thank you so much for inviting me it's, it's gonna be a really good chat no it's an absolute pleasure and um yeah it's um i think i've followed along with your photography for it's probably been about a couple of years i reckon yeah i just i think i've been following along with you for for a good couple of years as well yeah watching all your bristol i obviously love your style and your latest post is so good with is that that's in wales isn't it Lynn White. It is yeah that was um I actually took that a couple of years ago now. So it was my friend, um, Jamie. Nice. And we basically waited for about five years or so. For the... <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> it, was, um, it was a long kind of journey to get there. But we said, like, every winter came along and we were like, oh, we'd love to go to Brecon Beacons when there's, like, a complete whiteout. Yeah. And it was just kind of, either there wasn't much snow a particular year or, like, he was busy, I was busy, and, like, yeah. we just couldn't get it to work. And then all the snow was like midweek and we were working. Yeah. And then eventually it was, yeah, 2019, the start of 2019, it just all kind of came together. Oh, yeah. Isn't that amazing? I love, I love it. <laughs> Especially oh, man. It was, five years for it. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, but it was so good. And um, yeah, we were lucky because there was so much snow and um, yeah. my friend James got a four by four. So luckily we were able to get up it, like through the lanes and then oh, wow. take it took a big hike into the mountains and yeah, it's crazy. It's a crazy location, isn't it? I, I, I've been there a couple of times and if, I, I've never been in the snow, but it feels like a wilderness anyway. So it must've just felt magic in, in, in the snow. Yeah, it was. It was, um, <laughs> what was really freaky when we got there and it was, oh, I can't, it was pretty early. It was dark, really dark and really cold, like obviously really cold when we got out of the car. And then it was like this completely and utterly clear sky. Amazing. <laughs> Then it just started turning into like a sort of blue, sort of really blue light. And we had yeah. this like crazy blue light reflecting off the snow for about... Yeah, and obviously off the hours, it gave like this... Oh, it, did, it did look absolutely magical. I'm kind of jealous. I'd love to see it in that condition now. 
But yeah, yeah. No, it was really cool. And um, but no, yeah, great, uh, great to have you on today. And um, thank you, real appreciate it. And um, no, no, thank you. As I said, it's it's great to chat. Nice. And I guess well, a good starting point is if you don't mind, kind of just kind of giving us a bit of background to yourself and how you got kind of started in photography. That'd be really cool. Yeah, of course. So. I guess my I try to try to look back because all the years have flown by. But um, I try to look. My journey, I guess, started when I was in probably about sixteen. I think I don't know. I don't. Know, I I remember. I really. Do you remember that the, the really old iPod touches? Like the, I, I want. I wanted an iPod Touch. I think it was the fourth generation one. It was one. It had a zero point three megapixel camera on the back. <laughs> I know. I looked, at, I looked at the text specs of it a while ago, and I saw it was a zero point three megabyte. I was completely blown away by it, and I. I really wanted one of those and one Christmas I believe I did actually get it and that kind of I, I didn't intend to get into photography at all I just I, I started snapping family trips out when we went walking in Cornwall and things like that and it's, I, I guess it started to grow from there because all of my interest previously was in computing and programming and all that kind of nerdy stuff <laughs> so to make a, a big jump to something creative like photography was was I didn't see that coming but yeah, I just grew from, literally grew from school, just taking pictures of family trips. And I also, have you heard of the 10 tours down in? Yeah. Yeah, so I, that, I guess that really kickstarted my love of like landscapes. Okay. Uh, because you spend, I took my iPod with me. I don't think I was allowed to, but I, I did anyway. And I, uh, I was taking snaps of Dartmoor. And yeah, that's really where it grew from. And my, my parents bought me my first kind of bridge camera not long later. And then, yeah, that's that's really where it came. And fast forward to today, I've, I I really wanted to make it my career. And I've been doing that now for the past three years. Yeah, three years I've been doing wow. photography in the kind of creative space, helping brands and things for as, as a full-time job. So I'm, I'm very, very lucky to do that. Yeah, wow. that's, 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 a brief, that's a brief background. That's amazing. So, yeah, I think you're the first person I've ever spoke to that your first camera was an iPod. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't my first camera was an iPod with a 0.3 megapixel camera. Wow, that's cool. Have you still got the photos taken on the? Yeah, yeah. And if you look back through, if you go to the very bottom of my uh, my Instagram feed, I've kept them up there just for nostalgia, nostalgia really. And you can see the kind of oh, it's just so grainy. I mean, it's just even in like bright daylight, it looked like you were shooting at like ISO six six thousand or something. <laughs> but no, back then I loved it. It was it was a perfect way to start capturing things and i guess that's what i really love about photography is it's so easy these days for people to get into it and everyone loves it in some capacity even if it's just recording memories with friends yeah yeah but yeah first camera ipod nice <laughs> nice i love that that's really cool what was your first camera uh my first camera was actually a uh, oh, canon power shot a a something rubber it was like a little <laughs> Look at little pocket compact and nice. the reason I got it was when um before I went to university I went travelling um yep. for a while, like over to Australia. So it was purely just to have a camera to take photos like while yep. we were travelling. And um yeah, that was cool. Uh, yeah. Did you still have the photos from that? Were you like interested in photography when you when you used that or it was kind of before it was just on the brink of like I think when I got back, I started to kind of connect with photography uh, more. So it was, I wasn't, yeah, well, on that trip, I certainly wasn't kind of in that kind of photographic mindset, if you know what I mean. Of course. Um, and kind of, I hadn't fully discovered it. I think it was kind of just bubbling in the background. Yeah. And then when you came back, you kind of realized, oh, this is, this is really cool. I love that. I love... <laughs> yeah. I, I so wish I had that camera still though. I just, I didn't really know what happened to it, to be honest. No, oh, has it disappeared? Oh, it's going to uh, That was it. Funny enough, my first proper, proper camera is still in the office that I work in today. Um, I actually gave it to a friend who w works with me now, and he's got it up on the shelf, which is it's broken now, but it's still like a nice... <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So you were saying that you you kind of work in photography and you that's your... You started your own company? Is that, is that yeah. correct? I, when I when I turned eighteen and I finished college, I just I decided that I, against everyone's advice, I didn't go to university. I decided to I thought to try and hack it, try and do it because I'd been doing like Instagram a little bit in the background, 
and it had been going really well and growing really well and lots of great response. And I'd also been doing a little bit of brand work. And I thought, well, now's the time. When I'm, when I'm 18, now's the time to try. I can always go to university if it doesn't work. I can always, I don't have a mortgage, I don't have a family to provide. So I, I'm, I'm kind of like responsibility free. So I might as well give it a, a, go, give it a go at this stage. So I did. I decided to try and do photography freelance and doing weddings to begin with, which is, yeah, just, I saw you do weddings on your, on your bias. It's such a stressful thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love, I love, I always love doing weddings, but it's, I always find it very stressful because you, you always worry that your camera will pack up or yeah. all your cameras will pack up on <laughs> <laughs> some <someone's> special day. <laughs> so I did weddings and then I sort of transitioned it to doing more kind of commercial work for brands kind of bring, cause I always, I felt a bit detached doing weddings because I always loved the landscape, the coast, Dartmoor um, and going off and doing weddings sort of detached me from that. So I wanted to try and bring it back to so I worked my way up doing commercial kind of lifestyle work for brands, which is pretty much playing into what I do now. So over the years, I transitioned it and it's, I met some awesome other people and started a, a proper kind of agency out of it. So we've now got, we now offer not only photography, but kind of web design development, kind of elevate the brand in all areas, not just the photography. So that's sort of what, what I do now. Yeah, it's really, wow. it's really really exciting and really rewarding because i know you work with brands and i'm sure it's really rewarding when you see your kind of work posted in different places yeah it's also yeah nice wow that's uh that's incredible to hear and it's yeah really pretty inspiring that thank you yeah to do that at your age as well is like that's yeah that took a lot of determination and yeah that's amazing well, thank you. Uh, the, I, it's a lot of a lot of improvisation, really. I, I'd like to tell you I knew what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, uh, but it's, I, I, I couldn't have done it without the support of other people, though, as well. And having other people around you, kind of pushing you forward, it it that counts for us so much. So yeah, it's nice. exciting. Wow, that's that's really amazing. And do you you're like it's you're still working with like a lot of brands now? Yeah. So yeah, I still kind of head up the photography and kind of creative kind of the imagery and videography side of of the business so that so yeah working with a lot of brands all over the world now which is really which is really exciting and doing various different projects and and it's great because i've got other we've got other members of the team that kind of handle like web development and branding so it's really cool when you get a brand come on board and then you can do the photos for them and you can also kind of elevate their branding and their website and it, it it's awesome it's really wow Nice. Yeah, it's it's really nice because you're surrounded by lots of creative people as well. Everyone that, that I work with is so creative, so it's super nice. motivating. Wow, yeah. that, that's <laughs> awesome. And are you, is that um like we were talking beforehand? You were saying you're based in North Devon, so I, I presume your agencies or kind of North Devon based. Yeah. So are you are you familiar with Biddeford? There's no reason. Yes. why you, Oh, you yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason why you should be. It's a bit in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but um, it's based there, so we've got we've got an office office in, in Biddeford that we that we work out of which is really so we're literally a stone's throw from the coast which wow. is, I think plays a lot into kind of the work that we do and kind of the, the how we want to put ourselves across it's got a lot to do with the, with the coast and 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 yeah it's really cool nice nice that's amazing to hear yeah super super inspiring for me to hear that it's just a uh, yeah, really, really nice little story <laughs> <laughs> you've gone from basically gone from a uh, from an iPod all the way through to kind of <laughs> make the brand. So, so yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know, I, I think I think 16 year old Will didn't see any of it coming when he was taking pictures of his family on an iPod <laughs> in Cornwall somewhere. Nice, no, I absolutely love that, that's amazing. And um, you mentioned the coast and mm. that's kind of obviously on your Instagram page, that's a really kind of common theme that you seem to carry through pretty much all your photography. Um, yeah, I guess especially so in the last year and a half, I think, since being up in North Devon full time, because I actually moved up here. Um, yeah, I, I I love the coast. I, I think it comes from being born in Cornwall, so I was raised by the coast there. And then I moved to Devon, and it did switch to Dartmoor a lot, but also Devon has such a spectacular coast as well. And the North Devon coast is such a, a hidden a hidden gem of... Uh, have you ever explored any of the North Devon coast? Yeah, I do know. I know it slightly. It's... um. Oh, what's it called? Black Church Rock, the yeah. kind of triangular rock. Yeah, I've been been up there, and um, is it Heartland? Kind of the, the peninsula. 
you know, the whole peninsula with like the lighthouse on the end. Oh, and yeah. And the big waterfalls off the cliffs. It's like something out like of the Faroe Islands. Yeah, like it's, it's really crazy and like really dramatic as well. The so, kind of like, ang like the angles of the rocks and like how just it's really gnarly sort of coastline. Yeah, and, I th and it, it also plays in the fact that it's, it's so inspiring because it's not very well known. So quite often you're in, play even in summer at sunset, you're there alone in these locations and they are so dramatic and it's hard not to be, I don't it's hard not to be inspired. And I, I do quite try to want to keep some of the places secret, but I also want to, yeah, I also people, want people to see them because they are just, it's so underrated. People don't think to, to go up there. So yeah. Definitely a beautiful, a beautiful spot. Yeah, I'm glad. You, I'm glad you've been to a few places up there. There's because there's all sorts of hidden gems you can find. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it is. It's yeah, it is amazing little little area. And um, I guess people usually kind of just bypass it on their way down to Cornwall. I guess, or I don't. Know yeah, I guess if you're traveling from Bristol, you must go down to like Exeter and then up onto the A39, which sort of flies down the top yeah. coast. I literally. Right. Off <laughs> North Devon, <laughs> and you end up in, uh, then you end up on the the Cornwall coast. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. And um, you mentioned Dartmoor as well. That's um, somewhere you're kind of really familiar with. Oh, uh, so when I was born, in, I, I moved away from Cornwall when I was quite young. So I do remember a lot of the coast, but I moved away when I was quite young. Um, and we moved literally to like a railway cottage on the edge of Dartmoor. Literally within like a mile, you were you were on Dartmoor. So it was a fantastic place to grow up as a kid because you just find yourself running around on Dartmoor and through the woods and everything. So I guess it did come become home really. And Dartmoor was a big inspiration behind my photography in in, in the early days. Um, obviously, because it was just so close, I could just run up onto it in a sunset in the evening. So yeah, Dartmoor was absolutely. I think that's another underrated place. A lot of Dartmoor. I guess you've probably heard of things like Haytor and the and the common place on Dartmoor, but again, it's there's so many hidden gems up on Dartmoor that people haven't explored, and it's such a special place. Yeah, nice. Oh, they're pretty dear to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not um, it's not an area I've really explored much myself, so it's um, yeah, definitely one to put on the list. I think when everything's over, head down. I'll show you some places. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> absolutely awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be well up for that. Yeah, because you can take a four by four up, and there's some beautiful, beautiful like tours that which no one visits, and with big like valleys. Oh, it's dramatic! It's very dramatic. Nice. If, if you like dramatic photography, like going onto Dartmoor at like sunrise into the middle of it, it's just, oh, it's you, you can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So it's it's kind of the coast you'll kind of go to if you feel like you want to go out and kind of take some nice photos or conditions are looking good for the next day where you kind of automatically head towards the coast i think i think it's become that now yeah I, i've been trying to hold dartmoor a bit I, I i kind of keep going to the coast like i try to remember dartmoor but uh, especially discovering a lot of north devon it sort of draws me every time this is so much um yeah I, I love coastal shots at sunset kind of wandering along the cornwall coast especially if you go somewhere that's not very well known it is so magical yeah, so it's, def it's definitely a definitely a go-to. And I'm really enjoying like picking out, because obviously there's well-known spots all down the coast. And I've been to a lot of these now, so it's, it's nice to like zoom in on the map and try and find like coves in between that might not even be named. And I'll just take a random wander, jump in the car and take a wander over there. And you've, you, again, you just find so many hidden spots. It, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, absolutely, definitely a go-to. Nice. And have you got kind of a favourite coastal image? Have taken over the last few years. Oh, I've got a few. It's really hard to. It's really hard to pick. It's really hard to pick just one. I absolutely love some of the the Cornwall, the Cornwall coast. I think again, I hold it quite dear to me. And some of the landscapes down there, and the the Cornish coast is not quite like any any other coast. You kind of, it's very very different. So a lot of the a lot of my Cornwall images, I I really love. And there was one image down that I always have when someone asks kind of what a favourite shot of mine. And have you ever been to Star Point Lighthouse down in the south, very end of Devon? Uh, south Devon, yeah, I have actually. Oh, yeah. you have, yeah, yeah. There, I, I again, that's because it takes so long to get there. Even from like Exeter, it's like an hour and a half, and it's like not even, it's not even like twenty miles. But so it's so out of the way, and most of it's on like kind of little bridal ways of a road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it, is, it is crazy around there. It's um, it's an area of the country I didn't really know until um, I met my girlfriend, who's now my wife. And um, they, as a family, her family always went kind of down South Devon and went camping during their childhood. 
Amazing. And um, yeah, it was weird. It was like kind of when I met her and then she took me down there and we started like camping as well down there. And there's this whole like little area that I just like literally never knew before that that existed. It was... I find beautiful. that quite a lot. Like North Devon and South Devon is... Like, people don't even really know they exist, really. I certainly didn't know about North Devon until I moved the business up to... Until I moved the business up to North Devon. I didn't really know anything about the coast. I'd never thought to visit. But um, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing when you discover it, right? And there's, there's this whole new pocket of like inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's like both areas, just amazing, really amazing. And um, yeah, South Devon just blew my mind. It's just so, yes, particularly that start point kind of area. There's yeah. so many little places. And so it feels so remote when you're down there, right? Because it takes so long to get there. And I guess in the summer, it's quite busy these days. But if you kind of go in the winter time, like now, there's next to no one, next to no yeah. one. You end up just in this, you feel like you just drive all these tiny little roads all the way down to start point. And then you're just presented with this big lighthouse and no one around to view it, so, so special. Yeah, nice. I actually, um, when I was there, I actually quite struggled for, it was the first time I'd ever went there and I kind of went for sunrise and it wasn't a particularly amazing sunrise either, but I just really struggled to get like a composition because there's that kind of rocky sort of crag that goes out yeah. towards it and I kind of climbed up there <laughs> and the photo didn't quite work and then I ended up going right round the cliff but yeah, I ended up with a few quite nice photos, but yeah, I think yeah, I need to go back. It's a cool place. I know exactly what you mean, because part of the lighthouse is hidden by the rocks. So I always feel like it cuts off. Yes. So I guess how I fixed the composition there was I got my friend Matt to put my red coat on and go stand on the rock right in the middle of the so contrast against the white lighthouse. And that sort of, I took the attention off the fact that it's like half cut, off, half cut off. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's always the, those locations that look so spectacular in real life. Trying to find a composition is so hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, something I'd like to talk about, actually, with your photography, you of often place kind of a person within the scene. Yes. Is that something you've kind of just consciously liked to include, or is it just kind of naturally kind of developed that way? I think it started... Um subconscious just doing it I'm, I'm not sure why just composition i guess it made sense but i guess over time it has become a, a conscious thing to do i always like to if you're when i'm trying to create photos that people are going to kind of relate to it's there's a million nice pictures of landscapes sort of everywhere and I mean, especially these well-known locations there's a million of every angle you could think of so i guess i don't know i don't know if it works but my way of kind of standing out was to try and put people it brings some kind of perspective to the shot and especially if you like a big like, mountain range, like the Brecon Beacons, for example, I think it's quite hard for people to, to picture kind of the scale of, yeah. of, the, of the location. So putting a person in there to really show, wow, this place is, this place is huge, is, was a really good way to kind of tell that, start telling that story behind it. Again, it's another thing, uh, bringing in the story of, you know, if you put someone in there, there's a purpose to the photographs. Why, 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 is, why they stood there? What are they doing? And it, it kind of enters that that kind of journey is they just here's a nice photo there's a purpose behind it so i guess yeah it's definitely a conscious thing these days is to try and try and put people in landscapes um yeah nice nice i love that that's really cool and um you mentioned storytelling there is that something you kind of try and weave into your photography quite a lot i think so i i i, I absolutely yeah definitely i and more so recently i think this past um this past six months, I've really wanted to try and like weave my own story into it as well. Um, not just, not just a story of the photograph, but also like what I'm doing there, why I'm doing it. And I, cause I think that I get another way to stand out, you know, amongst the lot, the many, many photographers that out there these days, all, all of them having amazing, amazing work is to try and, you know, try and tell a story and bring authenticity, bring some value, um, tell you know, a bit behind the scenes who the photographer is so definitely i think i think it's really and it, with social media it's perfect it's perfect right it's, a, it's your own platform to kind of spread that that message and that story so definitely nice nice i love that yeah it's amazing i, I do think it's really clear in your photography you've got that very strong as you say you kind of you include a person and then there's like your story behind it and for me that comes across really clearly when i'm looking through your photos so yeah, that's definitely definitely <laughs> <working. laughs> <Just like that. laughs> 
But yeah, I think it's so. I think it's so important to to do that, and I think people get so much more value than just. Sit, and we'll stick around longer with you as a, as a photographer because they know you for more than just nice photos. They know you for the kind of added value, and that's something I really want to kind of concentrate on building over this well, over this next year. I think it's one of the goals for me is to keep adding as much value and story as I can to to what I do. Nice, nice. I did. Um, I caught one of your videos the other day. You were talking about um aperture. Yeah. yeah yeah do you like it it was it was so off the cuff <laughs> yeah, it's it really well done and like i think it's such a it can be quite, like such a confusing thing to get your head around when you first start in photography and i think yeah. the way you spoke about it was really nice like it really you. really made sense it was a great way to kind of approach it I know, because it, I guess it's one of the, out of all the kind of the base camera settings, like shutter speeds, um, white balance, everything like that, ISO, I think aperture is the most complicated of of, of them. And it's not very well explained. Well, they, people don't explain the whole of it because they, they often explain like depth of field and there's more to it than depth of field. It's, it can change the quality of the image. It can change how the image looks and kind of the light that's in it as well. Um, so I, I guess I just wanted to, bring together a like a, a complete explanation of it i'm glad you think it was good because it was kind of very off the cuff i'm still practicing with them <laughs> with videos a lot i don't i didn't script it you could probably tell <laughs> <laughs> nice and it, that's something you said you're gonna kind of keep developing over the next kind of year or so in terms of those sort of videos i, def I definitely think so i think it's it's again it's a really good way to add more value than just a bit like these Sunday sessions, it's, you're, you're more than just a photographer that does all of these. You're also trying to put like, inspiration out there, motivation out there for people, you know, encourage people into the photography industry. And I guess that's sort of what I'm, I'm doing as well, is, is I want to you know, build more than just a photography portfolio. I want to you know, get people to invest themselves into photography and the industry as a whole, well, creativity in general, really. So, yeah, definitely, I, if any ideas are welcome. <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah, I, don't, I want to build out more videos. I'm going to try and do them weekly or bi-weekly or whatever, doing different things as well as the photography too. And it also helps the business itself as well because obviously it spreads awareness of all these things that people can get help with. So yeah, it's, hopefully, right. hopefully it will work because I, I sort of abandoned my Instagram last year. You can probably tell with my, my, my engagement where I abandoned it for a year as I was focused on growing the agency. And I've really picked it up in the last six months. So. I'm interested to see how it how it picks up how it picks up again, uh, which will be really good. Interesting, that is interesting. So you, you pretty much put it down for a year in terms of your own personal. Yeah, I I mean I posted on the odd occasion, maybe like once a week, but it was so, certainly very sporadic and it was kind of rushed. There wasn't much strategy or thought behind it. Um, I guess it was just because it was so busy with building building everything. Yeah. I didn't really. It's often the, the thing that gets put. To the back burner is i don't know if you find it the same when you start like working with clients and things but suddenly that, that's in your forefront and social media gets put on the back burner at least yeah. at least it for me it is um so yeah i pretty much put it down apart from the old post for a year which i do sort of regret now because as i'm sure you're aware as well that if you put social media down everyone else puts it down with you <laughs> so, <laughs> trying to build it back up and re-engage with people and make connections again so they follow along is has been definitely a focus and nice. so I'm trying to see how that improves again over this year as i as i as we keep as i keep doing things that's awesome that's very cool and I, lo I love your message about kind of inspiring people and kind of helping people and giving them that like i guess bit of a helping hand into like photography or creativity i think that's uh yeah really inspiring thing I think one thing I'm really keen on is trying to build it into helping people actually make kind of some kind of creative art mm -hmm. their their career because again so so many people are such are such talented photographers or such talented creatives but they don't really know how to go about turning it into kind of they want it to be a livelihood but they don't know how to go about turning it into one so again something I really want to focus on is moving that forward and showing and trying guiding people into making it their jobs because it's such an awesome career to be in and with the amount of talent out there in the world, I think it's something that'd be, that'd be awesome to help people with. Nice. Nice. I absolutely love that. That's really cool. Will. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. Cause I'm sure you, cause you kind of, I'm sure you know as well with your kind of photography journey that it's like, where do you start? People sort of dabble in things and they, but there's no kind of concrete path into it and you know, no, no clarity. So 
and it's funny, I had no power, I was just sort of, <laughs> just, I pretend <laughs> I know what I'm doing, but I really didn't. Was, as I said, I owe it to a lot of people helping me. But so that's definitely something I'd, I'd love to help more with is you know, helping people make it a career. Nice, nice. That's amazing. And um, yeah. I'd just kind of like to talk about your sort of inspiration. Are there kind of creatives you look towards or kind of like look up to or sort of certain, I guess, sources or other things that kind of inspire you? Yeah. So I hit, again, the first and the biggest one I think is just the community on Instagram. I mean, the amount of love that everyone gives each other on Instagram and support is just, it's just insane. I mean, that, that is a massive motivation when you get lovely yeah. comments likes and you know you can have chats like this and you have conversations over dm that is a huge inspiration and when you see for example like your shot in wales with the snow i mean that is a, a big you know a big inspiration to go and want to you know create something similar or go to visit that place because you've shown it off um if you're if we're talking about normal like photographers that inspired me a big one that always sticks out have you ever heard of a photographer called alaya lakadi no He's a he's, he's a world, pretty world class landscape photographer, and he was helpful enough to team up with a, a YouTube channel called F Stoppers. I don't know if you've heard of yes. them. Yeah, they're, they're again a huge like kind of resource for me in the beginning. Um, nice. I still love watching their videos now. But they did a they did a, a video series called Photograph in the World, in which they basically documented going and making a, a tutorial with this photographer, Lyle Lacardi. Um, and his just photos are out of this world, and the amount of work he puts on behind the scenes to, to make these come together it's just it's mind blowing. it's mind blowing i mean you you go to sunrise and you take a snap and you edit it and it looks lovely but this guy will go like a bit like your whale shot waiting for five he'll wait for five years to get <laughs> and he'll keep going back every morning every morning until he gets and even if it was like semi-decent he doesn't want he doesn't want semi-decent he wants like the world's the world's best um wow. so cool. So yeah, huge. He was a huge inspiration, and kind of learning how he made it his livelihood, and like the process that goes on behind the scenes with him it was a huge, huge inspiration. Still is. It still is. It's, it's nice. Incredible. That's amazing. That's really cool. I absolutely love that. Um, there was actually a really good question that came in while you were talking. If you oh, don't mind. Yeah. Um, so the question was: If you were starting out now, what would you focus on? And the top three tips to get into the industry That's interesting. yeah so i think i would decide a niche down now because it's something i never did was i sort of just tried every area of photography i went into weddings i went into portraiture i did, I did pets any anything and everything that came in because i guess you're so like enthusiastic about getting into you'll, you'll take anything but i think real success started to come when i niched it right down so right, i, I want to do landscapes how can we make landscape photography work i really want to work with brands so kind of, i built a niche around kind of commercial lifestyle outdoor photography and that that's number one i think is pick up pick up a niche um and focus on that the next thing is i it's so it's everyone knows it is these days is instagram and social media and networking with people is just the number one way to kind of grow anything if you have enough conversations with people and you do enough you put yourself out there enough it's it's inevitable at some point that will be returned and you know some op some opportunity will come up even if it's doing like a podcast or you know taking over an instagram account for the weekend that's a step forward in that kind of in that direction so uh, upon kind of niching down and picking com like commercial lifestyle outdoor photography as, as my niche and then I, I focus heavily on just reaching out to people just trying to make connections talk to anyone and any, and everyone the kind of that's relevant to build a relationship try and learn from them you know have you got any opportunities any tips that you can take away networking is, is was the biggest thing and i think I, I, again from the experience i've seen from people is they kind of just wait around for for work to come in and i think you'll be waiting for a while <laughs> sometimes for that so again a, a one big differentiator for me now is just going out and asking and banging on doors and you know put together a media kit and a photography portfolio and just go and send it to everyone have ideas you know bring something fresh don't just email people saying do you want some photos you know have a plan in the back of your head or like, what can i do for this brand what can i bring value to and yeah and things will start slow it's about patience i guess i think you things will start slow but if you keep consistent you know it'll start to build in and you'll start to they'll refer brands you work with will refer you and 
and yeah, it snowballs. Let's see, I guess that's why I think focus on one particular area, really grow your network and try and network with anyone and everything, put lots and lots of content out there and then go out and ask, basically go out and bang on doors and see what you can find and get. Nice. Yeah, nice. I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely brilliant advice. And um, yeah, I think that's really good. And I, part of that I feel is like enjoying that journey as well of like kind of progressing through. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I don't think be on a rush. Don't be in a rush to no. make it a career. Don't rush into it. Um, I think build it up slowly and organically and um i think you'll 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 t you'll make better decisions you'll better hopefully get some money behind you as well to kind of you know, support you because that was something i was really lucky to have when i jumped in full time because so i did have a a savings pot behind me that could support me in that kind of first year full time um which was very much which was very much needed you know to invest in equipment invest in, in, a, in a better car and things things like that a better camera um so yeah don't t enjoy the journey i think don't be in a rush to be kind of a world class photographer build it up uh, definitely nice nice that's awesome well really amazing tips thank you <laughs> <laughs> again i'm not saying it's the only way into it either. i'm sure as i said i'm just talking from my own my own experience so, you know, like, definitely and again it's something i urge other people to talk about is you know, to share try and share how you did things because you know everyone can learn something from exactly yeah exactly yeah it is amazing when you talk to people and just I even find if I go out shooting with different people and just kind of seeing how someone has approached something different in terms of the photos themselves. Oh, and definitely. You kind of see their work afterwards compared to your work and they've seen it from a, just a completely different angle or different take on things. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, I guess I love, that's why I love working with with a team of creatives now, which because everyone has such different ideas and we can bounce it around and, because again, when I first started, I think you were kind of sat on your own wondering what to do and it's just your ideas. And that's where it really helped, you know, t tapping into Instagram and having conversations, going out and shooting with different photographers that are doing different things. Some of them might be fully professional now, some of them might not be, but they all have kind of their own journey that they're on and can offer advice to, to move you forward as well. Nice. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah. Top advice for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I, hope, <laughs> I hope that answered the question anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no definitely definitely more than answer the question that's great Brilliant. and um i just wondered is there kind of a photographic moment or kind of a memory that really kind of always brings back like a big smile to your face when you look back on it oh it's a tough because I, I i think my there's there's two moments that really that really stand out for me is the first one was when i got contacted by Apple actually. And it, I guess it wasn't necessarily a, pho a photographic moment, but the moment I, I thought it was a spam email. Um, you know, I, I, I had this real sense of achievement in myself when you, you know, Apple reached out to me and asked me to go to London, do like a, a photo, a Christmas photo walk um, wow. in London. So I guess that was, puts a smile on my face. Amazing to see how, I guess I took a pause and thought, wow, this is how, it's, it's amazing to have come this far. I never had any idea it would lead to this kind of stuff. And the second one is actually, it's your, sh it's your shot that reminds me of it because I remember that is the most, one of the Brecon Beacon is one of the most amazing kind of landscapes I've been to. And I actually walked up that hill and stood on the end and you look out above the lake and the, and the black mountains in the background. I was like, wow. I mean, this is, this is, this is my job to be able to go and photograph this stuff. <laughs> so all that kind of stuff. It, it, it puts a smile on my face and also it's humbling really. It's, it's, you know, you know, you never expect it. I never thought about it that it becomes something like this. So. Wow, that's Definitely. that's really cool. And um, please tell me when Apple contacted you that you mentioned your first camera was an iPod. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting enough, they 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 were mostly interested in iPhone photography. Funnily enough, so they really wanted to know about the my experience with the iPhone photography, and you know how I how I could bring that into the photo walk show people how to capture better shots with their iPhone, which wow. I think is again, incredible. I don't think it should be a barrier. I, know, I think having a, if, even if you just got a mobile phone, I mean, some of the images you can capture with that is just incredible. So yeah. <laughs> I, wow, should have, I should have said my phone, can I bring my iPod? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> that, that must've been a, quite a crazy email to get in the inbox. 
Yeah, it was. It's, 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 I thought it was a spam email to begin with. I almost deleted it. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> you just don't expect to be contacted out of the blue by, 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 by Apple. Um, yeah, it was such an incredible opportunity to, to go up to London and, you know, do a big presentation on their like they they got their their Regent Street store which has a big like screen the size of a double decker and you can and doing a presentation in front of fifty people or whatever was there and then take them out into London to do photography with them it, nuts wow yeah, absolutely nuts yeah nice nice <laughs> that's awesome that's it was five years ago now time flies like, like, it was years ago now no, three years ago three years wow. ago. it was like literally within like six months of becoming full time did, did that did that happen so uh, yeah time flies by wow nice that's so cool and um i think what i'm yeah as we're like developing this chat it's just really amazing and like inspiring for me just to hear that you're so passionate about photography and you've really kind of followed that passion through and kind of yeah. you're you're doing what you love that's yeah such a cool thing it's i, th I think it's so important isn't it to try and do what you love i i, I guess I've, I've grown up knowing a lot of people that have kind of just gone through life not re just doing a job for job's sake and as a result have not really enjoyed that that journey and it, and it's something i've not wanted to to replicate i've always wanted to try my i'm always up for the journey and you know i, I worked in the kitchen doing the dishes for you for a couple of years as well doing all that kind of stuff so I, I know what it's like but i've always wanted to go on that journey to you know the eventual aim is to do what makes you makes you happy and actually put doing the steps to, to get there not just sort of accepting necessarily where you are and staying there but trying to progress while also enjoying everything else around it so yeah i think you've got to do what makes you happy try and do what makes you happy i know it's not as simple as just doing it but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah definitely nice. yeah super super passionate about it about it all nice yeah. that's that's amazing work and um have you got kind of a dream adventure that you're kind of maybe kind of i guess when the world opens back up a bit more if or if you want to keep it to this country kind of saying you're kind of aspiring to do or kind of photo shoot in mind as well is a kind of something you're aiming for i think before everything one of the and it still is my kind of a, a bucket list place at the moment is to head to two places i'd like to go to the faroe islands because i've never been and, I, and I, I know it's such a cliche answer for photographers but you see you see you see the landscapes that people capture there and you're like wow this out of this yeah. world so i'd love to go and visit and the second one is kind of uh, the amalfi coast in nice. italy it was a big one of the photographer i mentioned alai lakadi he's one of his favorite kind of stretch the coast in the world was the amalfi coast down down in italy so i'd love to go down an adventure because you've got all these i don't know if you've seen but you've got all these like kind of like mountain villages like right next to the sea yeah and, like mountains in the background oh i'd love to, i'd love to visit Nice, nice. I love that. Yeah. What about your dream adventure? Oh man, so many places. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> every time you speak to a different person, you get all these like little seeds planted in your head. But um, I think Iceland actually at the moment is. Oh, that's another place. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that would be amazing. But I also love kind of hot, kind of tropical places as well. Um, <laughs> so, kind of yeah. I think particularly this time of year in the UK, it's just like <laughs> craving that heat. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Do you know what temperature was the other day? It was minus seven up here. It was so cold. Wow. Oh, so yeah, I, I can I can feel you with dreaming of the of the uh, of the tropical places. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool. That's Definitely. amazing. Yeah. Um, but... Sorry. sorry you... No, no. Sorry, I was just going to talk more about the coast. But no, <laughs> you go, you go. No, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I was just gonna say those are those are my kind of my dream places. But as you said, like Iceland is another is another is another amazing place, and yeah, the coastline there is just so. I've always dreamed of having the, that, the big like four by four Land Rover Defender and yes, and through Iceland, yes, that's, yeah, exactly. I'd have to do that. But yeah, also a place closer to home. Um, I've been a couple times before, but again, it was before I was like really into photography. Um, Scotland, yes always loves I, I i went um a couple of years ago now to the, to the west coast of scotland like the isle of sky and uh the apple cross peninsula i don't know if you've heard of that it was like kind of parallel to to the isle of sky it was actually kind of eye-opening apple cross was really beautiful and magical and and rural and it genuinely you're like 30 minutes from the nearest fuel station and the supermarket was two hours away that's kind of how remote like 
the West Coast is on Apple Cross anyway. But it's interesting, you cross over and you go onto the Isle of Sky, and it's, this is something I, again, I, something I want to work on more and you know, post more awareness of is like, how commercialized like the Isle of Sky has, has become in, in recent years. And you see all these beautiful like landscapes of the old manor store and the fairy pools and all those places on the Isle of Sky that everyone's familiar with. But my God, it's, 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 a, it's a center of mass tourism. Like when you go to the, uh, the old manor store and you see this big, what looks like a wilderness, and it is, it's in the middle of nowhere, like in the mid, absolute middle of nowhere. But honestly, when I pulled up the old manor store behind me were three coaches unloading 50 people, a coach, all walking the same trail. <laughs> and it's amazing. And as amazing a place as the Isle of Sky is, it's, it was on, you just saw how much damage kind of tourism is doing to such a small island. And again, this is something I want to become more aware of is, you know, how much a voice on social media does these days. And if people are posting about, as you said, Black Church Rock in North Devon's kind of this hidden gem. Um, but, you know, when you shout that out and you say this is where it is, it undoubtedly starts sending more people there to check it out too. So it's kind of the downside of inspiring and motivating people to get out there and explore. You also have to be careful of kind of the effects it's having. So, yeah. oh, sorry, I went on a bit of a tangent there, but it was just when you, when you mentioned Scotland, it was, it's such an amazing, but I'd love to go back again. But it was so, it was eye-opening going to the Isle of Skye which was kind of uh, like a, a landscape photographer's haven. And it's amazing to see what tourism has kind of done to, to the island, the island there. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it is. It's a really interesting topic. And um, yeah, it's, it is crazy. I think as soon as Instagram opened up the whole like geotagging thing and you're able to put locations on it, it just certainly when we've been like traveling and, um, for example, when we went over to Bali a few years ago and there was like, it was so clearly obvious that there was like places that a year ago were like unknown, untouched. And then someone's like a big Instagram has tagged it, yeah. like an amazing viewpoint or like a bit of coastline. And then you can just see almost like the locals have like really quickly like put, put everything in place. And like, they, obviously there's this influx of people coming and like they've tried to like create a bit of like a hub yeah. there. it's just like i i don't know it's quite a strange thing it's just like a really yeah. as you said the the most important thing in it for me is just trying to as it as amazing it is to go there and like obviously everyone's like like welcome to always kind of be there and see it it's just trying to manage it or somehow control it in a way that doesn't isn't detrimental to the planet yeah, it's, it's always like the hard question because I want, it's kind of, I want both things. I want to motivate people and inspire people to go out and see kind of the world they live in, whether that's on the doorstep or halfway across the world. I want people to go out and see these things because you know, they're just so incredible. But exactly. on, how do you, how do you kind of raise that awareness to, you know, people to respect these places? So it's, it's, it's a challenge and still, I, I don't really know how to, because I've had a few people tell me not to tag geolocate places or name the places we're in. And I, and I get their point of view, but I also don't want to restrict people from knowing where these places are and also seeing them and going to them themselves. I don't want to like hold it to my hold it to myself so no one can see it. Um, but then, yeah, I completely get their point of view. How do you how do you prevent like a flood of people then heading there to, to take their own shots of it? I yeah. mean, because yeah, another one, amazing one is this. You'll probably recognise the shot if you saw it. But there's one in America in a canyon. Where they they throw up the sand and then the light ray comes down through the canyon. It's a very famous shot. But there, there's like a queue, and you queue up, and each time there's an assistant that will chuck the sand for the photographer, so you can take the same shot, and it will literally day in day out just have a queue of photographers kind of making their <laughs> <laughs> making their way into the wilderness where this canyon is, before having like the tourist board just throw sand for you to to take a shot, and then charging you fifty quid for the for the privilege. It's wow. It's crazy, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it's um, I do in some ways, yeah. I feel like Instagram is almost like the modern equivalent of postcards at times. So yeah, people go to the like, locations and collect, collect the postcards in terms of photos. Yeah, um, which yeah is really cool. Is and as you say, it's really like for me when I see an amazing location on Instagram, it's super inspiring. Yeah, you know, I I save it. I save it. And I was like, I'll go there when we when we get, when I get a chance to. Yeah, actually. Yeah, but it's just yeah, having that 
respect for the planet and respect for nature, if you've got that in the back of your mind, then obviously if everyone does that and has that respect, then things can kind of stay as amazing as they are at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I guess it's just a gentle balance of um, trying to... Yeah, uh, and a big one for me is when if I go to a place like that, I think I'm, I'm more likely to share that experience behind the scenes because again you see a lot of people take a picture of the old man store which is incredible um but they try to make it out like like it's now this untouched wilderness when it's it's really not because if you've ever been up to the top of the old man store you're you're joined by 50 other people so <laughs> i think being honest about that and you know i did when i when i posted some of my shots from the west coast of scotland especially the fairy pools was a big eye opener because it was kind of devastated by like the river banks on the ferry pools where all the grass was missing. There's rubbish everywhere. And this is just like a, like a, a tiny Island with a, a tiny place on an Island surrounded by mountains. It's in the middle of nowhere, but it's somehow been de devastated by, and so I, I didn't make a point to talk about that. Cause again, people will show the ferry pools and oh, look at this amazing blue water and the amazing landscape behind it, which is very true, but they don't mention that you're there with 50 other people and, you know, the devastating effect that it's having with that there. So I think it's just about talking about it, being openly honest, like, okay, I went here and it's amazing, but yeah, this is the effects this place is having, and, you know, just spreading awareness, I think, more than stopping people by not sharing location. Yeah. Yes, I completely, completely agree with that approach. And I think it's a real, really sensible way to kind of approach it. Yeah, well, I don't know what other ways to, to go about about kind of trying to achieve both things that is such a gentle balance but yeah sorry i went off on a real big tangent about scotland then what do you say <laughs> you no it's all right no it's good it's kind of the whole the whole point of the, these chats to kind of kind of go down little rabbit holes is always really fun and, yeah uh, <laughs> absolutely no it's, no it's been awesome well and um we've got well i've been on just over 50 minutes so we've got a few minutes left so i was going to say if anyone's on and they want to ask will or myself a question you can either put it in the comment box or press a little question mark symbol. Um, and then, yeah, we've got, got a few minutes so we can uh, answer some questions if there are any. But yep. um, I guess in terms of, yeah, I'll just ask if it's right, I'll ask you a couple more questions. And, um, yeah, no, free, yeah. I'll see if any, any come in. Um, yeah, one I had actually, which is a question I quite like to ask different people. Are there any kind of daily rituals that you have um kind of i guess like kind of well-being sort of wellness sort of rituals that you find kind of brings benefit to your photography yeah um it's a, it's a tough one i, I when i saw you because you sent some of the questions through that you were we were planning on talking about before before the live stream which was really helpful and i saw that one and i was thinking to myself aside from a morning coffee it's like kind of motor <laughs> to sit there and drink. i guess one big one is is trying to always schedule time to go out and enjoy the outdoors i think and this was something that really dwindled last year when i was focusing on building the agency like holy it's amazing how much you just stop going out or you don't go out as much so every week i try and for as long as work permits it and situation permits it is, is try and get out at least once a week and that's kind of i guess weekly ritual is try and explore somewhere new and that brings like fresh motivation fresh inspiration to you um so that's one big one. Uh, yeah, that, I think that's the main one. I, I, do, I do lots of things. I, I remember you mentioned kind of meditation, which is something I'd like to look into more, but I, I, I currently enjoy running and things like that. That really helps kind of more calm me down these days and de-stress and then I go out for a run and then, you know, everything's, everything's good. So that, and, you know, just those kind of good habits, I think trying to keep energy levels high, which motivates the photography and the business life to keep pushing forward. So I'm always not feeling lackluster as much as, as possible. Yeah. What about you? I'm interested to hear some of your daily rituals because I yeah. obviously use like meditation and things, and that's something I'd love to look into. into yeah, more. Exactly. It's um, yeah, it's been quite a journey recently and particularly with kind of what happened last year, I kind of took the time to kind of think more inwardly, I guess, and kind of yeah. go on a bit of a journey of myself. So yeah, meditation, I've been kind of three or four years, I've been kind of delving into it. Interesting. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really amazing. I've had, like, basically where we were living at the time, we saw an advert, I think it was on Facebook, and someone said, introduction meditation class, and myself and my wife decided to go along, and um, 
yeah, it really blew my mind. Like, first good. time, something never done before, just like no experience. And then we sat down with this guy in the room, and like, there's probably about a group of eight or ten of us, and it was just super interesting. And, like, immediately, really? like, I just connected with it, and like, he kind of guided us through this visualization, and um, yeah, there's various things we were thinking about, and wow. yeah, it just had a really kind of profound effect, and then that kind of just set me off on a bit of a journey, and um, he recommended using Headspace, which is... Yeah, I remember you replied to my comment about using and I, I, it's definitely something I want to look into, kind of using more of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome, and you can download it, and then they've got... You do have to pay for the subscription if you really want to get into it, but they've got quite a few um, classes on there to try. Interesting. And, um, yeah, it's it's cool. I just find it really cool, and um, it's not. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, and sometimes a few weeks can go by and I haven't touched it, and yeah. other times I'll every day I'll be doing it. But like again, rent. it's a bit like kind of photography. It's this journey of kind of that I'm going on with it, and it's um, yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I think. Me, like kind of the, like daily rituals for me have been about trying to, you know, maximize my kind of my mental feeling. I guess so. So it sounds really kind of spiritual, <laughs> but it's, it's it's not. It's just I just I just want to try and maximize like me feeling good as and energized as much as possible. And I've been really kind of reading into a lot of different things around that and trying to put into practice good diets, good exercise schedules. Because in the long run, it's 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 very cliche, but it will it will benefit the work that I do and uh, and a big one is making sure I have downtime as well and not um and not you know working myself to death you know because you're you're suffering from burnout so again as, as we were saying like Saturday and Sunday for me are kind of more way more relaxed days I'll go out and explore I'll just relax in bed or whatever and work on the bed you know keep it relaxed and I think that kind of sets me then up again for the new week um see so, definitely nice nice yeah completely agree and it's um <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's kind of feeding like a positive loop as well. So obviously, you're the only one responsible for how you feel. And then once you kind of grasp that kind of theory and kind of start working with it, and yeah, it's yeah, it's such a powerful thing. And um, yeah, for me as well, I've like used this year, the past year to like read about it a lot more. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've got some really, really awesome books. I've been reading all about it. And it's just like, some of the stuff that I read, I'm just like, my mind is just like, <laughs> well, yeah, there was like a, there's an app I discovered the other day called Uptime. It's on iPhone only, but I've, I've, it was literally, I've had it like a week, but it literally condenses like kind of some like uh, the world's best books, the world's best documentaries and kind of speeches um, down into kind of just like really five minute segments that you can like read or listen to. And it kind of, puts across the message from that entire book in kind of like three insight segments which has been super interesting to wow. I, I just I, it really, I really recommend it because it because again you can start to tie stuff to your own work and what you do so i'll hear an idea in a book that i've just kind of had summarized for me and you can like, yeah, oh yeah that kind of plays out in the work that i'm doing with this client or the business and how i want to move it tomorrow that kind of so Things like that, I think, and incremental steps. Don't like kind of try and change everything all at once. I've just slowly developed and added to kind of what I do. Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. That's absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I think we're nearing the hour. There was one question that came in, which I just saw. So I'll just put it up on screen. Um, awesome. So, yeah, quite a nice one to end on, I guess. Uh, <laughs> what, what camera do you use, Will? This is interesting. So I, now I, it's, I need to upgrade it at some point. I, I use a, a Sony A7. Um, which is quite years old now, but it's still, it's, it's always held its own. And I, I, I love Sony cameras. Um, I had DSLRs to begin with, like Nikon DSLRs, but as I sort of transitioned to doing more kind of like outdoor lifestyle, you know, they're so heavy, right? You know, with, by the time you hug, you take the camera body as well as all the lenses in your backpack. I mean, it works all the way. When I was walking up on like Dartmoor and the Brecon Beacons and kind of Snowdonia and things, it, it quickly it quickly gets heavy so i decided to make a switch to get to go to mirrorless and try it and i've never really looked back since nice. Actually, i love mirrorless cameras they're lightweight they're great quality and even the sony a7 being however many years old eight years old i think now it still holds its own and the photos it produces are just oh, amazing wow. so um but yeah I, it's something i like to look into upgrading probably this year or hopefully it's getting a new i probably want to go for the new sony a7 are they right. doing the four now? I don't know if you know. I think I think they're going to like Sony A7 four probably. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> to look into 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 doing that. Nice, that's amazing. And um, yeah, I think it's a it's a nice place to wrap up. We've, um, I guess, just to summarise, we've covered so many <laughs> topics, which are really really cool. And um, I love the fact we kind of went into kind of the environmental sort of side of photography as well. Um, touch on wellness at the end, which is really amazing. And then, yeah, just hearing about your personal journey and the way you've kind of approached things and your inspiration, but the way you also kind of inspire others. And yeah, I think it's been really amazing for me to hear that. And uh, I hope everyone else has enjoyed it too. And um, <laughs> just like to say a massive thank you, Will. No, thank, no, honestly, thank you. It's been really, it's been really great to chat. And uh, again, I've learned a lot of things chatting to you as well. And it's, it's been really, really interesting. So thank you so much for, for having me on. Um, yeah. I look forward to seeing more of those Wells pictures, hopefully, because I, <laughs> I love the one you put up today. So uh, thank you. So uh, oh, appreciate it. And um, yeah, look forward to chatting to you soon. Take these. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Have a great day. Absolute pleasure. Bye. See you, bye. Bye. bye.